All right, and that concludes our, you know, sort of surface level browse through all of Modeler. We're going to go back through again now with uh, an eye towards detail and find some really cool tools uh, that will help us model a lot rather quickly. Um, but before we do, I have one bad piece of news here. Um, I apologize deeply, but I did not, in fact, nail the Rubik's Cube. The green and the white are swapped. I'm sorry, my Rubik's Cube friends. Anyway, whatever. Let's uh, close that object and um, start over here. So. So far, we've been talking pretty basically about tools, and for the most part, the tools that I've shown you how to use are instructive and in that you can use what you learned about how to use that tool to learn how to use most of the tools. But there are some that have you know different qualities that I want to talk about now that will make you a better modeler. And we're going to use disk to talk about this for a while because we haven't played with disk as a primitive that much in this tutorial series. So what we're looking at right here is a 26 poly disk and uh, you know this one has too many points but whatever we'll let it slide and if I hit T and drag it uh, you know it, it shears the whole thing but it's not a very interesting bend if I wanted to make it look like it was bending like a pipe or something like that I'd kind of be SOL because there's just not the resolution in the wireframe that I made when I sent off to the company that sends you back 3d disks I didn't put in enough information and now I'm stuck having to edit it after the fact well this is where tools like knife come in really handy. We're going to go over to the multiply here and look down in our subdivide tools where knife and cut live. Um, knife in uh, knife in Christopher Walken's voice. Let's kill the grid here and darken the background. Light wave after dark. Yeah. All right. Cool. What knife does? Uh, it's Shift K or just clicking the knife tool. If I uh, control and drag, click drag, uh, I draw this blue line through my object that I can use to add a line of detail into the geometry. So now I actually cut it more or less in half. Uh, it's very important when using the knife, knife tool not to go halfway uh, because you end up with really weird poly errors sometimes down the road. It looks fine now. Well, I mean, it looks dumb now, but it looks like it's not broken now, but it might cause trouble down the road. So it's very important to knife all the way through whatever it is you're knifing. And this is another example of a thing where if you're actually using the knife operation on something rather complex, you know, not just a primitive disk, but, you know, a, a whole model, uh, if you run into trouble with the knife tool, uh, it might not hurt to go ahead and triple that model because it's things like knife and the other things we're going to talk about here today that are the reason you want to be careful with having too many points in a polygon and all that stuff. Anyway, but that's how knife works, right? So if I, you know, turn on the knife tool and hit in, uh, minimal number of controls, you know, basically just axis, uh, but this is fine, and uh, allows me to make that cut. Uh, I use knife all the time, and, and I'm sure you will too once you've uh, gotten used to, you know, using it. It'll become part of your workflow. But a lot of these tools beyond knife uh, in the subdivide world require, it's not a drawing the direction of the tool thing. It's more of a, based on the selection you made, I'm going to try my best to do what you want. Uh, so this is where having good selection habits comes in handy, and you do if you you know I've, I haven't taught you the wrong way, so if the way you've been doing it is fine. Um, but you know I'm going to go ahead and select this guy and this guy, and then do my you know right arrow select ring trick, and uh, let's pull open cut. Um, what cut's going to do is this: it will you know add as many cuts as I tell it to. It's like using knife only it doesn't work with a drawing you have to sort of select the direction of polygons you want to knife and then it'll work that way but check this guy out so I'm gonna go into cut again uh, there's these little modes down here add edit and delete uh, by going to delete mode just clicking on these guys allows me to kill them ba -ba -ba -ba. going into add mode lets me add them uh, and I can put them anywhere I want like this and it will be reflected in the object. This is a handy way to add a lot of geometry really quick. Uh, in terms of, you know, there's many reasons to add geometry to something, and cut is a really useful tool for that. This button right here called uniform will put them out in a uniform arrangement. Uh, and cut is my favorite way to make, you know, a lot of changes to um, the amount of, you know what I mean. Anyway, that's how cut works, right? Uh, and one of the main reasons for using uh, something like this is if you are, you know, after you've sent home from the, uh, you, you, they've sent you the box, the, they've sent you back the disc that you ordered and it wasn't actually what you needed. Cut's a fast way to make it what you do need. I'm going to show you a cool trick here. Uh, I just selected the top polygon and by shift closed bracket, I'm just going to grow my selection and, you know, shift open bracket will shrink it. 
And I'm going to go all the way to the bottom. Let's go into a side view here. And I'm going to hit Y to rotate. Shift, open bracket. And you kind of keep doing this. And this would be one way to kind of add this cool pipe bend to my otherwise straight up and down pipe segment. Um, because if you don't have multiple points of articulation, uh, you know, the way the primitive comes, uh, you don't have the ability to make smooth curves like this. And this is one way to do it. Uh, but there are basically everything you're doing in lightweight, there's a better way to do it all the time. You know, there's always a bigger fish. There's always a better way to do something in lightweight. And that will take us handily over into the modify tab, where we shall now talk about things like bend. Let's go ahead and go into two layout mode. Go front and right. Um, so bend in. Uh, get, draws out this weird little handle guy, uh, and by using my right mouse tool, I can um, ah, God damn it, uh, bend bottom right click and drag up. Uh, this handle controls the fall off of the bend. The top end has that big fat end. That's the you know the strong end of the bend, and it's going to be bending around the end of the fall off, the weak end of the bend. So now, having you know right click and drag that out, left clicking allows me to do this guy. And I can um, you know, bend it even better than the other way. You can tell that it's kind of freaking out. That's just when your mouse is really close to the boink, you know, the, the bend terminator. Uh, it, it doesn't know exactly what you want, but there's bend. And it's a tool that is really useful, uh, but it's one that you have to be in the right axis for. Because if I was in the Y axis right now, it would do some really weird shit. But that's how bend works. It's also how uh, taper works. Taper has uh, multiple falloff shapes. You know, this is the same as bend right here with the you know fat end on one and short end on the other. But it allows you to do this. But there's also falloffs like this guy, uh, which will do that. But that's bend and taper, two rather handy tools to have in your toolbox. Um, and while we're talking about it, let's make a box. I'm just hitting the Radius segments Y, let's crank that way up. See, otherwise I would have had to use cut. Ah, send it off right, you don't have to make edits later. So here's this nifty ass, uh, you know, box. I don't know why it's nifty, but uh, in modify we also have twist. Generic. Uh, let's go in the Y axis. that guy up, click and drag, We. but if I go from the top, haha, <laughs> can do that. That's what twist does. Cool stuff. Anyway, but that's, you know, I, I, I separated those from the initial tutorials just because they have slightly different handle controls and I wanted to, you know, we're gonna, we're building knowledge on top of knowledge here. Uh, so they came later, but all rather basic stuff, and that's sort of how they tend to work across the board. So you now know most of the ways that tools in Lightwave can work, and now it's just a matter of clicking on one and fiddling with it and seeing what it does. Also in Multiply, we have the ability to do stuff like cloning. Now, clone in Lightwave is the same as copy and paste. Like right now, if I control C, T, drag, control V, you know, whatever. That's what clone does. And the only difference is clone in the numeric panel has quite a bit more uh, to offer than what just control C and control V does. Uh, let me turn on my grid real quick here. So this is a box that is, yeah, it looks like it's a one meter box, right? Let's go into clone. Uh, and I can set the number of clones, we'll say five, and I'm gonna offset them by 1.2 meters. Um, if I offset them by one meter, each successive clone will only move one meter along the x-axis. And since it's a one meter box, that means they'd be edge to edge and it wouldn't actually look like a bunch of discrete boxes. It'd just look like a long tube box. But I can offset them in all axes. I can change the scale of them, uh, et cetera, and so on and so forth. But it allows me to do stuff like this. Um, clone, while totally capable of doing this, isn't actually my preferred tool for doing operations like that. What I prefer is Array. Uh, array does pretty much the same thing. It's just, it's a little, it's a, it's a more, summarized interface right here, and it also has radial mode, which we'll talk about in a second. 
but I'm going to make uh, X count 15, Z count 15, and offset again by you know a little bit more than one meter so we can tell. And look at that. Now you can kind of see the, you can sort of see the use of this because now we have the ability to make kind of a city if you wanted to. Bear in mind, so far the only thing we've done is made a box and then done the array. Um, but now I'm just going to click and drag and kind of just swipe across the screen randomly here. Be -do -be -do -be -do -be -do. Cool. And hit close bracket to select all of everything that I've selected. Uh, go into side view here and H, control drag. Ah, see, this is not again. Yeah, it's showing what's going on here. Yeah. So I'll do another one just randomly. That means that some of them are going to get double height and some of them are going to get, you know, blah, 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 blah. The left, the H. Scale up again. And now we're well on our way to having a city. Uh, if I do that exact process again, well, let's do it from the top just to be fair. Otherwise, there's an unfavorable bias towards the tall buildings. And, uh, you know, hit the close bracket to select all of each individual object that I have one poly selected on. And delete. Now yeah, we're getting somewhere. Yeah, baby. And with the knowledge of the tools over in Multiply, uh, we can do stuff like this. Like, I'll, t I'll take, uh, you know, I could do this with 75 buildings at once. I'm only going to do it with one just to indicate what I'm talking about. Um, there's one other tool in the subdivide category that we didn't talk about, which is subdivide. Um, in faceted mode, uh, does this. Uh, and you can do that as many times as you want, you know, within the realms of reason. Uh, but I could do this to, you know, I could do that selection really, really around the whole city thing and just pick some buildings at random to add this amount of detail to. And when I have this amount of detail, it's, you know, a rather easy feat to hit B for bevel and kind of throw one of those on there. And now I'm really very quickly starting to add detail, you know, sort of generic procedural detail to a lot of things at once. So for, you know, very few clicks, I'm actually getting quite a bit of good uh, detail in there. There's flat shade. And just like that, you know, we've created a city rather quickly with, you know, we, we made a box, we arrayed it, uh, and then just started kind of, you know, randomly selecting them and scaling them up to get sort of different sizes and all that stuff. And uh, when we have that many objects, randomly selecting them and subdividing gives you options to do commands to all the polygons in that subdivided object. Uh, it's it's cool. It's it's a you know one way of working really fast, and it took us no time at all to make that city. Hooray! Twenty five thousand five hundred and thirty polygons. Yep, we are official now. Anyway, the other thing about array is you can do radial arrays like a ball. One meter ball there. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag it off to one side a little bit. You'll see why. Multiply array. Uh, radial around the y-axis center 0, 0, 0 does that. The reason I moved it is because if that ball was still at 0, 0, 0 there would be 16 balls total, but they'd all be right on top of each other. Uh, dragging it out kind of allows me to do that. And this is when you start getting really abstract. Like I wonder what happens if without paying too much attention to it, I just right click drag and do some sort of a weird bend. Ooh, cool. And I don't know what the hell I'm making, but, you know, I don't know, it's a cellular tornado. But these are, you know, some of the, the more fun tools with slightly more advanced numeric setup panels. But now that you know how they work, you actually do know pretty much the way any tool in Lightwave is going to work. Uh, it's not necessarily just as basic as, you know, the box primitive numeric panel, but when you get into stuff like, you know, cut, uh, once you understand how that interface works, that's, you know, that's the advanced stuff. That's every other tool in Lightweave is probably going to work on that, uh, on that level. It's going to look a little bit like that. Is there anything else that I forgot to mention? Well, we could briefly talk about Lathe. Uh, Lathe is one more really useful tool in Lightweave. Uses the uh, the splines actually. We're going to go into create uh, new spline blah, spline blah. What the hell? Uh, and just kind of draw a guy out like this. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, N, closed curve, please, thank you. Enter, and then, you know, Control-D to make it a poly. Let's go into wireframe mode. I want to make sure that it's right on the 
origin. Uh, I want to make sure that it doesn't go beyond that point at all. So I'm going to make sure that this guy is right on the origin. And uh, delete these points. So it lines up like that, right? And it's right now floating perfectly in the center on the origin. When I uh, go into lathe, we get that. You know, it's a lathe. It's just going to extrude it circularly around the axis, and I have made a crappy vase. You know, it's like the digital equivalent of a, you know, 101 ceramics class. But that's how lathe works. Anyway, with these tools, now you're really dangerous. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about the, the super fun stuff in the next video. Uh, I'm talking now about Boolean, which is so cool. Uh, see you guys there.